If you somehow missed the biggest project in Middle Earth YouTube history, here's a quick refresher. In 2019, the world gets shut down, and to keep my local community connected, I launched a massive isolation crafting project to build a true scale Minas Tirith gaming board. After releasing some guides and templates right here on Zorbazor, people from all over the world jumped on board, sending in walls, towers, orcs, soldiers of Gondor, siege towers, and suddenly, as we furiously laid the tracks before the moving train, a whole bunch of my fellow YouTubers got roped on board to help build the first one. 100% complete suburb of Minas Tirith, aptly named Tubertown. This journey began over 18 months ago, and now today, at long last, the big reveal is here. But first, it's time to light the beacons of Zorpazorp. This seems pretty safe. Ah! Oh, it's Kundal. Oh my god. The beacons of Minas Tirith! The beacons are lit! Zorbazorb calls for aid. And YouTube will answer. F yeah. I start a YouTuber! Yes! The Horn of Zorbazorb. Can you hear that? What the fuck are you on about? Lucky! Nine companions. You shall be the fellowship of the Zorb. Taxi. Who's a good boy? Why is it I'm always the f Pony. Now before we go diving into the amazing creations from my fellow tubers, let's have a look at the city they'll be inhabiting. Over the past two months here at Zorbazor, we've been working on the Lamprite Street, a massive section of Minas Tirith encompassing the inner and outer ring walls of the first and second level, the second gatehouse, and the streets of Minas Tirith winding their way down Mount Mindolwen. Focusing on getting this crazy landscape as screen accurate as possible whilst keeping it playable has been a real challenge, especially with the staggeringly high walls and a big decrease in elevation for our roads to traverse. To celebrate this huge collaboration, we're giving away a copy of the new Minds of Moria set. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe, and comment below which of my fellow crafters' buildings is your favourite using the keyword Moria. In last week's video, we started working on the complex elements of the landforming using footprints of the buildings sent by the Fellowship of the Zorp to help us plan for their project's arrival, and began to build foundations for their creations, terracing into the sloping mountainside, and our most complex of all was this crazy footprint by Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop. Complete with inner archway and all sorts of shapes, winding the roads and stairs around this building was very tricky, but it looks absolutely amazing. Although Although there is still some work to do. But before we go any further, it is my great pleasure to reveal the Crafters Guild of Minas Tirith. The Lamprite Street is the hub of all trades and craftspeople in the White City, and the Crafting Guild of Minas Tirith is the most important building in this vital city sector. Whether you're after a blacksmith to forge you a sturdy blade, a cartwright to help you bear your burdens, or even a rat catcher, the Crafting Guild will point you in the right direction. With a large central hall for gatherings of skilled tradespeople and offices for the various heads of different disciplines, this regal building is a place of learning, community, and industry. Look at this absolute beast. I am seriously blown away by this masterful work of art. The stonework, the shingles, it looks like it's just been teleported straight out of the films. The modular components, the removable roof, and the macro detailing, the shape of the structure, it's all so visually pleasing, and we can already see when it's interfaced with the foundation, it's going to be amazing for gameplay. But speaking of foundation, we need to finish building this structure into the board. Eric's amazing crafters guild hangs over the the join between the two halves of this board, and the eastern half still needs a portion of lower foundation to be built into the mountainside as the unfinished Lamprite Street winds down towards the gates. 
Our first job is to cut and texture another plinth for one of Dave from MS Paints buildings, which will sit just behind Eric's crafting guild. This is just a simple block of extruded polystyrene with our classic stonework texture you guys have seen in a billion videos before. And then after slicing up a small staircase to meet with the upper terrace stairwell and the foundation of Eric's tower, I mixed up some modeling compound, grabbed one of my flagstone rollers and put down some lovely stonework texture. We looked at this process in detail in the last two videos and you'll see a lot more of it today, but with that section dry, we can assemble our lower foundation components, and now it's my great pleasure to reveal the contribution of the mighty Dave from MS Paints. Many of the buildings winding down the Lamprite streets are of course the various workshops and storage houses of the fine craftspeople of Gondor. Nestled in the alley behind the Crafters Guild are two smaller workshops for a glassblower and a metal worker, specializing in lead detail pieces for the city's architectural finery. But directly before the second gate itself is the Master Lamprite's workshop and showroom, housing the works of the preeminent Lamprite in Gondor. Dave's three buildings are absolutely choice, bringing in some vital greenery with vines and creepers, as well as giving us some new takes on the classic Gondorian forms with some variety in building size. These smaller footprints are fantastic for gameplay, creating little alleyways and streets. Speaking of streets, it's time to finally deal with the Lamprite Street itself. This was so damn difficult to contour, so sit back and enjoy some sexy time lapses, folks. I used a combination of foam and cardboard, all kind of different angles to get a lovely gradient that bent around the corner and wasn't too steep for models, and I had to make sure that would tessellate with all the little alleys branching off. Then it was time for a heap of flagstone work with modeling compound and a textured roller. Working in smaller sections and relayering portions that didn't take really helped me build a super realistic finish. To finish off the top of the board, I carved a neat little stairwell to go down next to Dave's bigger building and continued the alleyway with more cobble and edging, blending it in with the upper terrace we made just before Christmas. If you're new around here and you're into crazy scenery builds in Middle Earth 40k and beyond, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below because mental massive scenery is my jam here on Zorbazorp and if you think this build is crazy, you should see what's coming in 2022. With those pieces down, we are really starting to capture those Gandalf riding through Minas Tirith vibes with the Lamprite Street really coming to life, but we're looking a little sparse on one side of the street. So so it's time to reveal our next epic member of the Fellowship of the Zorp. Before the gates on Lamprite Street sits the largest apothecary supply merchant. The main thoroughfare passing through the lower level brings the apothecarian a steady supply of deliveries from the vales in the south, rich in herbs and healing remedies. In times of sickness or plague, a constant stream of couriers on foot and horse are seen passing to and from the Apothecarian Merchant to both the lands beyond and the houses of healing higher up in the city. I absolutely love Raquel from Rackrex Arts Building. It has so much character and wicked details, the stained glass, the roof tiles, and I'm really loving seeing all these similar but not identical color schemes coming together. We're really assembling a very realistic tapestry of Gondorian slate and stonework. Remember guys that all the in-depth build videos for these amazing creations are linked down below in the playlist, in the description, in the pinned comment. Please show these guys some love and just throw that playlist on repeat all week long. I owe these incredible crafters so much for their work and we need to send them some Zorp love. So as you can see, the plinth beneath Raquel's building needed some more stonework texture, which I matched from the adjacent retaining wall, and then we had a few special details on the upper terrace to complete. I grabbed the battlement template that Albert Fravale from Microforge Minis had laser cut for me, and used that to smash out some extra crenellations, first to finish off the last stretch of outer ring wall, and then for that small wall section above the lower courtyard. Then using the exact same methods we looked at nearly two years ago now, I smashed out the top portion of the bastion, ready for a trebuchet to deploy, and we've now found ourselves the perfect spot on the upper terrace for our next epic building by Benji from Benji's Hobbies. Rather than the beast of burden or noble steed seen passing through the city gates and across the Pelennor, Baruthiel Pet Supplies breeds, sells, and houses animals for highly specialized roles in city life. As well as companionship to the city's many citizens, the menagerie is especially well known for its limited carrier pigeon network maintained within the city, which is much faster for messages traveling from the citadel to the lower levels, as well as breeding amiable felines who make short work of the many rodents nesting within the city. 
Now this portion of Minas Tirith features a rocky promontory that begins to thrust out from the base of Mount Mindolowan, and the stonemasons of Gondor incorporated those rocky foundations and worked them into the city. But before we start building our mountainside, we need to reveal one of the oldest buildings of this city district, the lovely Minas Tirith Barber by Andy from Beard Clipper. During the early years of Minas Tirith's history, this building was a key financial institution nestled into Mount Mindolewin beside the Second Gate. But over the years passed from the Bank of Barahir to the Commercial Guild, and then left the finance sector altogether to become the Beard Clippers Barber, the regular hairdresser for the soldiery man in the outer walls and the working class citizenry conducting business within the crafting districts. After lopping off the front pavement to nestle it into the upper courtyard, it was time to build the Beard Clippers Barber into the cliff. So I grabbed some sheets of expanded polystyrene and bulked out the back, joining it all together with foam adhesive and clamping and weighting it down to prevent expansion. Notice I'm only joining these pieces and the rock work to come to the building, not to the board, to keep this entire piece removable. I then marked out what parts of the wall behind it would need texture and applied our classic stonework treatment, although I ended up just doing the whole whole face of that wall so that I can use this piece in different layouts. I then removed the amazing Pelennor Gardens tomatoes billboard to be reused where it will be more visible and now it's time for rock work. If you're keen on seeing this process in detail, check out my Dol Guldur build where I tackle this monstrous cliff face, but essentially using a selection of plaster cast rock pieces, I planned out and then tacked together a cliff face using PVA and hot glue to hold it in place and then used yet more modeling compound to join the pieces together, creating a seamless rocky surface and locking it all in place forever. And with those two pieces done, the top terrace is looking amazing. I absolutely adore the small details in Benji's build with the animals and the signage. It really adds some city life. And Andy's building is such a dominating feature of the landscape that creates an awesome backdrop for the battles in the upper courtyard, plus the signage and character is epic too. And now it's time to work on the lower courtyard. Up first, we need a few pieces of foam to create a nice little plinth which will elevate yet another of our amazing creations above the roadway, and then we have a whole lot more modelling compound texture. With some careful trimming of the texture to get the joints snug and a stone fascia for the stairwell, now would be the perfect time to reveal the amazing broadsword blacksmith. So that is all the major landforming elements finished, but Ollie from Broadsword's building is still not here. It is stuck somewhere in the void of COVID postage. So I can't wait for it. So I'm gonna dive into the next stage, the final element of the building, which is detailing and sealing. I'm gonna bring in grout, more compound, fill all the gaps, fill all the grooves, get everything perfectly seamless and ready for priming. And hopefully I get a knock on the door from the postman very shortly. All rightio, the home stretch, ladies and and gentlemen, a few detail pieces left to go, little accents and battlements, a doorway here and there, and then it's time to make everything into one sexy, continuous surface and get rid of all of these gaps. These were filled with a seam of Geek Gaming high strength PVA, and then I sprinkled tile grout over the whole surface and used a toothbrush to push the powder around, making a nice blended edge. Grout is an amazing material to work with because it's super fine grain, so it looks realistic at this scale, and it's also an adhesive that activates with water, which will lock down the edges of all these compound sections for extra strength. Once I had grouted every nook and cranny, it was time to seal all of the grout and modeling compound components. I am a little nervous right now because the roads are pretty brittle in this thin layer, so I absolutely soaked them, first with isopropyl alcohol and then a drenching in Geek Gaming Matte Scenic Sealant, which you can buy from my store, zorpazorp.com. This sealant is a mix of PVA vinyl and water, so it activates the grout and the isopropyl alcohol creates a capillary action, allowing the sealant to penetrate the material substructures and lock it all down. I must have done about four coats drying in between and now the whole surface is rock hard. With Ollie's building still not here, we'll dive into priming the top section of the city and I'll be using two different coats. First priming with a foam safe floral spray paint, which doesn't melt foam in any way. This layer will allow 
allow me to use a Rust-Oleum spray which would damage the surface as a follow-up. I used this sexy green tone because that was all I had in my shelf, but it'll be cool to see if any of this shows through in the recesses. Then all over with a nice bright flat white. As I spray the white, I always keep it no closer than 12 inches to give the propellant time to evaporate, which is the component that eats the foam. But before we can prime the second half, it's time to finally reveal the broadsword blacksmith. The armies of Gondor are mighty indeed. And although the metalsmiths of the White City have diminished as of late, the broadsword blacksmith is one of the finest weaponsmiths in the city. Nestled directly beneath the outer wall, well, Ollie's building didn't make it. It is lost somewhere in the realm of COVID postage. So the incredible broadsword blacksmith will have to remain a vacant city block. So there was nothing left to do but give the whole front piece a big prime, first in green and then in white. And my goodness, has the road surface gotten durable now with a layer of heavy primer over the top. And I think we might just be ready to set this bad boy up. This project is nearly two years old, and this specific collab has been in the works since February of 2021, and it is simply staggering to finally see it here on the tabletop. I've still got to paint my portion of the city and add all of the sexy details of city life, and then in the coming weeks, we'll finally get to see a hectic battle played out across the streets of Minas Tirith. I cannot stress enough how thankful I am to the amazing tubers who have worked with me on this project. Please, 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 please go down to the pinned comment and check out the playlist with all of their build videos. They each had an amazing journey crafting their epic contribution to the city and watching the buildings come together is an awesome experience. I'm actually quite excited to see what the hell the broadsword blacksmith looks like. Fingers crossed Ollie's video isn't the only evidence we ever have that it existed. And how about Eric's utter masterpiece? Staggering. Not to mention Dave and Benji and Andy and Raquel. I I love you all so much. There's also a few faces from our fellowship who didn't appear in this video, so stay tuned because more madness is coming. Another quick shout out to the amazing Chris from Swords and Brushes and Joel Rombouts from the Gorilla Painting Service who generously painted up all the amazing models you're seeing here and donated them to the project. You'll be seeing a whole lot more of their work in the coming weeks, but their channels and Instagrams are in the description if you want to see some more photos. To my wonderful fellowship, thank you so so much for your craft, for your love and your patience. This video has been delayed no more than 17 times due to a million different things, but we have finally made it. The beacons of Zorbazort were lit and YouTube answered.